Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. As you can see on the screen, Malwarebytes Browser Guard is blocking IsraeliNewsLive.org. So you're going to have to click that little box, do not block this site again for malware, and continue to the site. Please do. Uh, in fact, if you would, if for no other reason, if you'll just type in IsraeliNewsLive.org into your browser, if you get that, just please go there and click on it and click on that do not block site again just to send a message to these guys here. We're not going to tolerate what they're trying to do. Okay, this is like insane. And I tell you, this is one of the reasons why they're blocking us. I loaded up a video, and I don't know if I've ever loaded this video before that Yana did. I was looking at some of the archives that I have uh, from conferences that we have done. And I know some of these conferences we did not share before. Uh, and so I loaded the one she did, how AI and 5G are connected to Talmud and Kabbalah. And then today, I'm on DuckDuck.go, and I get that type of a block. We're under an attack, friends. We're under attack like you have no idea. And so I sincerely ask and, and covet your prayers for my family. Uh, my wife definitely going through a hard time, and I'm sure some of you have already seen the video that uh, that was released that did talk about things that I have only alluded to and still I'm not allowed to speak about things publicly as of yet well I shouldn't say that there has been permission granted but it, the attorney has to be present in every um, every step that we do whether it be written or uh, interview wise uh, so yes things are going to begin to come out very very soon uh, so we want to make sure that you're aware of that too uh, and then on top of it, I get attacked like you have no idea, especially, especially when God has been so merciful to reveal some amazing things to me. And he has done just that. Again, I have uh, Mr. Shapira's video up here. And, uh, and, and I do want to say before I even play one second of this clip here, two clips we're going to use out of this video here. Uh, this is nothing against Mr. Shapira. Uh, I greatly appreciate that he believes that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. I do appreciate that about him. Uh, but I am very concerned, though, doctrinally, and he's not the only one. Believe me, he is definitely not the only one. There's many, many, many guys that are totally misleading the, the church. They're misleading the believers. And I realize they're about to take people to a new world order. And a lot of these guys, they I, honestly, I kind of think they really don't know that they're doing it. Uh, listen, I was on the same page. I was right there with Mr. Shapira uh, years ago. Even Amir Tzafarti, uh back when I still lived in Europe, had sent me an email, wanted to connect, wanted me to come to Switzerland. Said he worked for the banks over there in Switzerland, wanted me to come there, wanted to meet, wanted to talk about things because we were a little bit more on the same page and I was actually going to do it. Uh, things didn't work out. Then we began to wake up and recognize what was going on. Uh, that uh, A lot of indebtedness to my own wife and her research. She began to really uncover a lot of things and so we worked together. And from the scriptural side is where I uncover it, and she uncovers it from all the documentation and things like that. And generally, what's what's interesting is generally Jewish people or former Jewish or Jewish background people like myself that end up exposing those crimes that are being committed by those that claim they are Jews and really are not. Uh, so I'm hoping that uh, perhaps Mr. Shapira eventually will wake up and see these things as well. That's sincerely my desire that he would actually you know take to heart what i'm speaking about and that it would cause him to have a transformation and i know that would be hard for him it's very hard to come out like that you know but he could have a tremendously good impact on people rather than taking down that that same road and like i said he's not by himself there's many people that do uh uh you know mark built no different he's doing the same which of course they're very close friends he's at his church here speaking or or I believe they consider that a synagogue, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, and I, and I met Mark. We did an interview together. Mark, really lovely brother, you know, uh, but again, just sincerely wrong. And there could be so much good that could be done. It really could be 
amazing things could be done there. All right, so we're going to break this down. And, and God has really been very merciful to me in Jeremiah 31 and showing me some amazing things. I really trust it's going to be a major blessing for you. Let's listen in. Uh, we listen to uh, Mr. Shapiro here. And I, when I say Mr. Shapiro, I'm not doing that in any disrespect. I just try to remember, I know the words Jesus said, call no man rabbi. And so that's the reason I'm doing that. I'm not, like I said, I'm not doing that to be disrespectful, only uh, trying to remember the words that Jesus taught us. And I've, of course, I've called him rabbi before, called many people that, but I try to stay away from those things. And please don't ever call me that either. I'm your brother. That's all, just your brother. Let's get into this. In the book of Micah, chapter 17, that the last redemption will be like the first redemption. And in the first redemption, all of Israel saw the thunders and the voices and the lightning. That's mean that in the last one, also we are going to experience together. It's not going to be one of those selected things. It's going to be greater. It's going to be something we experience together. Therefore, we need to prepare the house of Israel together. Together. Not to leave anybody behind. Okay, that's where I want to pause it right there. All right, now, <clears throat> what Mr. Shapira is kind of alluding to here is that he believes, and by the way, there's not a Micah 17, so I'm assuming he's saying from Micah 7. Um, and it's basically just, it doesn't speak about they saw the thunders and the lightning, but I understand the premise behind what he's saying is that... Uh, as he said, nobody's going to be left behind. In other words, if all of Israel saw the thunders and the lightnings, then in modern days, all of Israel is going to see it again, that the house of Israel is going to come back with the house of Judah, and they're going to see everything. But the scripture does not say that. So I first want to just deal with that. That's a simple thing. Not that big of a deal, but let's just look at it. The nations shall see and be put to shame for all their might. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick up the dust like a serpent, like a crawling things of the earth. They shall come and tremble out of their close places. They shall come with fear unto the Lord our God and shall be afraid because of you. Who is God like unto you that pardoneth the iniquity and pacify the transgressions of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. Notice again, it's a remnant. He will again have compassion on us. He will subdue our iniquities and you will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Wow, that's amazing, right? And you will show faithfulness to Jacob, mercy to Abraham, as you have, have, uh, sh have sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. Now, that's just from Micah. And again, uh, he said Micah 17. He could have been talking about Zechariah or something. Uh, something. I, no, not even Zechariah. only got 14 chapters. So not really sure where he come from on that. But the idea, though, is what I want to look at. So we'll, we'll just we'll base it on that. The premise that he's saying that all that house of Israel is going to come. Well, here we have right here. We are now in the book of, uh, I believe we're in Isaiah chapter 10, if I remember right. Let me just quickly look. Uh, no, yeah, Isaiah chapter 10. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. And it shall, okay. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire and his holy one for a flame. And it shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. The glory of his forest and his fruitful field, he will consume both soul and body. And it shall be as when a sick man wasteth away. And the remnant of the trees of his forest shall be few that a child may write them down. Ain't going to be very many, is there then? And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and they that are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth, and a remnant shall return, even a remnant of Jacob unto God the mighty, El Gibor. For though thy people, O Israel, be as the sand of the sea, so in numbers, they're like the sand of the sea. Only a remnant of them shall return. And extermination is determined, overflowing with righteousness. So we see nowhere scripturally does it give us that inclination like Mark says, but just the opposite. So we just want to kind of first establish that. Now, let's go back to the video want to continue to play a little bit more here. Um. Let a man 
of fact, I want you to see the word of the Torah here as they finally, we're going to work backward for a moment. It says, Numbers 33, 1, it says, these are the stages of the children of Israel by which they went forth out of the land of Egypt by the host under the hands of Moses and Aaron. The word there in Hebrew for stage, the word Masa or Masae is the word to journey. Notice here something important. I'm going to jump no, past that a little bit. Rabbi Shapira. It's not a complete for Avatami ministry and it's not complete for El Shaddai. That's, that's where I wanted to get. Let me back it up it's, a little bit. Our though. salvation is complete. Have you heard that? I'm saved. I'm good. Important. Bondage here we go. Right here. Pharaoh. We sometimes have the notion that we already, because we received the Messiah, our salvation is complete. Have you heard that? I'm saved. I'm good. Everything is good with me. Hallelujah. But let me say it clearly and bluntly upon the entire house of, of prayer, upon all of the people who are watching online. No, the redemption, the journey is not complete. Nobody here in the room should be happy or satisfied today that the redemption is complete. It is not complete. It is not complete for Pastor Mark Belts. It is not complete for Rabbi Shapira. It's not complete for Avatami Ministry. And it's not complete for El Shaddai. Listen closely now. It's complete only when one and only thing happens. Are you ready? When Israel walking into the land. When Israel as a whole walking into the relationship and the new covenant with the God of Israel. Then all of Israel will be complete. And then our redemption will be complete as well. I know it's important to understand that, but hello, Jeremiah 31 says, Behold, I'm giving a new covenant to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. It doesn't say, I have given it to the Gentiles. The nations need Israel. You need Messianic Judaism to succeed. You depend at Messianic Judaism on thriving. Yes, you do. I want you to know that, and I'm not saying in a prideful spirit. It All right. Now, this is where it really gets very sad. Because this has been so fulfilled, Jeremiah 31. And you're going to see it more fulfilled today, I think, than you've ever seen it before. Uh, even I've seen things that I had no clue, had no idea that it was Scripture being fulfilled. Amazingly. Uh, so it's more of a blessing for me to be able to share this with you than anything. And like I said, I just only pray that uh, Mr. Shapira, Mark Biltz, and the rest would actually uh, really consider these things because what God has done is amazing. And truly, I, I, I agree in principle that Israel had to return in order for this to be fulfilled. So in principle, I do agree with Yitzhak Shapira on that issue. He's right about that. But the thing is, is if it's already been fulfilled and you're applying a fulfilled passage to a future date, then you've got it all skewed up. And what we have then is we have the Pharisees of 2,000 years ago trying to lay claim in modern days to a prophecy that has been fulfilled and to get you to believe a lie. Jeremiah chapter 31. Let's go right into it. Don't forget it is a remnant. As he quotes from Jeremiah 31, 31, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt for as much as they broke my covenant, although I was Lord over them, said the Lord. But according to verse 30, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according, now notice that, not according to the old, co to, the, to, to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them up out of the, to bring them out of the land of Egypt. What was that? That was the, the Torah. The Torah is the old covenant. 
We know that when Christ came, it was a new covenant. I mean, it's so clear in the scripture. It was a new covenant. And if the, I mean, if we had the time, we would go through it. But I don't want to do that today. In fact, I will. I do need to really take the time to do it. And I know I always say these things and I forget to go out and do the video. You guys may have to help me. In fact, Elizabeth uh, and, and Rosa, you girls, you guys, you email, email me quite a bit. Just remind me, we got to come back and we need to do a video and really get into the depths of that new covenant. All right, but let's back up though. Let's take a look at some things here in Jeremiah chapter 31 that we've overlooked. For there shall be a day that the watchman shall call upon the Mount of Ephraim, arise ye and let us, let me make sure I get my notes here. I've got them here. We go. I've got them right here. I don't want to miss anything while I'm doing this. All right. Arise, you let us go up to Zion, unto the Lord our God. For thus saith the Lord, sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout at the head of the nations. Announce ye, praise ye, and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. What? Save the remnant of Israel. Well, you know what's, what's interesting? Jeremiah knows the prophecy of Isaiah. Only a remnant of them shall return. Right? Not the whole nation. Not every single person that's the house of Israel is going to come in and recognize, but only a remnant would recognize them or would recognize the Messiah. Behold, I will bring them from the north country. What, what country was that? Babylon. They had been taken by into Babylonian captivity up in Iran. And it was, you had Artaxerxes, you had um, Cyrus and Darius. And the, uh, the Cyrus cylinder, remember the Cyrus cylinder? And what it says on the Cyrus cylinder? King Cyrus wanted to return all the peoples back to their lands, including the Jews. Not just the Jews, but including the Hittites, Perzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, as we see in the book of Ezra. Of course, Israel, in chapter 9, Ezra, we saw they mingled the seed. They had mingled in amongst those nations, Hittites, Jebusites, etc. That's how we ended up getting that reptilian race mingled in with the Jewish people. That's how we ended up having the overthrow, even though they had went into the country. We had an Edomite king. You're looking for Esau, the fulfillment of Esau. Mr. Shapiro, the fulfillment of Esau was, was none other than Herod himself. There's your Edomite king. So we go on to read. They come from that north country. Gather them from the uttermost parts of the earth and with them the blind and the lame. Watch this. And of course, we already know the scripture that says they prophesied, right, about the blind. They know that the, lame, the, 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 the blind are going to see. The lame would leap like a harp. Remember that? Jesus said when, when, when John come and ask, you know, when he's in prison and everything, are you the one or do we seek for another? He said, they said, go back and tell them. You know, the, 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 the blind receive their sight and, and the cripple are walking. And the gospel is preached to the poor. What more did he need to look for? I mean, even John, the apostle, didn't fully have the revelation that he was the Messiah. So we think today that all these well-meaning ministers and stuff get the fact that the scripture has been fulfilled? Sure they don't. Harabi yaledet yachidav. The woman with child and her that travails with child together return. Do you know that that's a prophecy? I mean, I didn't even realize it. But when it said, her that travaileth with child, the woman with a child, in other words, the child is already born, it's a yelled. but then the woman that is travailing with a child. What do you know? Remember Elizabeth bore John six months before Jesus was born. 
Mary is coming back with Joseph from Egypt, greatly travailing with a child. A great company shall they return hither. You know, it's interesting how prophecy, a lot of times, look, and we've seen it so many times, even the apostles, they would quote a fulfillment of scripture, and it would just be one little verse. Even a, even a part of a verse. Jesus quoted part of a verse out of a, out of a verse when he quoted Isaiah 61. The woman with child and her that travaileth with child. John and Jesus. Like I said, Joseph was bringing Mary back. He, she's sitting there. She's so pregnant. You know, I'll often type that along with the story of Joseph, you know, because when did, when did, when did Joseph recognize Excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry, Joseph's brothers. When they were going back home, and 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 Joseph had put all the gold back in their sacks, right? Put it back in their sacks. Sends them back. Doesn't tell them who he is or anything. Sends them back home to their father with all the, with with the food. Because why? Christ was the bread of life. And this time, Joseph is representing the bread of life. Sends him back. Doesn't cost him a dime. Showing that salvation is completely free, right? And then what does he do? He sends him back. And when he goes back. They, they're, they're, his brothers are on their way back. They stop at an inn. And they're going to put the horses away in the, or the donkeys, whatever they got in the stable. And when they do, they open up their sack to give a little bit of food for the, for the, for the animals there. And next thing you know, they got the doggone money back in the sack. Oh, they got nervous in, boy. Where was Christ rejected though the first time? By his own brethren, when he was in the womb of his mother, and they come to a hotel, and they weren't allowed to stay at the hotel, but they were made to go down there to a stable. That's why that story of Joseph has it there, where they were, you know, they, 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 they get all nervous and everything at the stable. It's a sign to them what was going on. Oh, my goodness. They shall come with weeping and with supplication. I will lead them. I will cause them to walk by rivers of waters in a straight way wherein they shall not stumble. I am become a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. Are you serious? I feel like Paul Bagley right about now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Listen here. Let me show you something. All right, first, let me see what I, I got some notes here. I want to make sure I don't miss out anything here. All right, Jeremiah. Um, where are we at here? Jeremiah chapter 2. Oh, my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me fountains of living waters and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Is Israel a servant? Is he home born slave? Why has he become a prey? Oh my goodness. Isn't that interesting? Is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? And what does it say right over there in Jeremiah? Israel, I become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. But what they do, they forsook, they forsook. The rivers of waters in a straight way. See, they had forsaken that. I'll cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. All right? Because why? Back over here in uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah reported they have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountains of living water, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. You took the Pharisee way. And that's what's happening today. People are taking the Pharisee way. You're taking now because the guy puts on a kippah and puts on a prayer shawl and says, he was, says he's Jewish or come from a Jewish family. You take the Pharisee way and you take broken cisterns that can hold no water instead of taking the living water, the very fountain of life of Jesus Christ himself. All right, you got to be quiet. You can't be making all that noise. Sorry about that. Maybe he's saying amen. I don't know. So anyway, so let's continue on. All right? 
They broke. They took that one. Now what do we have here? We have. Um, I got to go out and look, guys. Sorry about that. Zechariah 14. It shall come to pass in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the eastern sea, half of them toward the western sea. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. And that day shall the Lord be one and his name one. When did God become king on earth? When Jesus Christ was crucified. Oh my goodness. And do you not know that that's when the water, that's when that living water shall go out from Jerusalem and half of it went toward the Eastern Sea and half of it went toward the Western Sea. And that actually even represents not just East and West, but it also represents the ancient times. It goes back. In other words, the blood of Jesus Christ covered those, those that had been, that had come before and it would cover those that would be coming afterwards. Praise be to God. Talk about, no wonder why I was under such a heart attack this morning, right? Let's take a look at that and just to prove it, right? The woman answered Jesus. We're over in the book of John. All right, let's keep going now. Now we go over here to the gospel of John chapter four. And let's see here. We'll start right here. Now Jacob's well was there, chapter four, verse six. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me to drink. What was that? What did it say over here in Zechariah? See? Oh, wait a minute, wait. The living water. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not what I'm looking for. Oh, I, I, I forget now why I did that. Let me come back to it anyway. His disciples are gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that you being a Jew ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that says unto you, says to you, Give me to drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. There it is, right there. Living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with. The well is deep. From whence will you get this? living water. Are you greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinks of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. There you go. He's that living water that Zacharias speaks of right now. That living water should go out from Jerusalem. And Jeremiah 31 right there. Um, I actually see I'm over here in Jeremiah 31 right here. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way wherein there shall, they shall not stumble. It'd be by Christ that they would come, that they would recognize he is the rivers of waters. He is that waters of life. All right. And as I said to you, how do we see that fulfilled? Over here in the gospel of John chapter 19, one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true that you might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone in him shall not be broken. Not only that, that's where that water went out from Jerusalem. Of course, as the scripture says too, it was literally, I think, in fact, I think it's in the Gospel of John there. If you go down further. Yeah, here it is right here. But the hour cometh now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Um, actually, no, that's not what I was looking for. I'm looking for the part there where, you know, what it was, the Holy Spirit had not been given yet. Um, so anyway, you know, it's, it's, it's absolutely astounding, Jeremiah 31 being fulfilled right by Christ Jesus himself. Let's continue on. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, declare it in the isles of far off, and say, He that scattered Israel doth gather him and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. You see there? So Mr. Shapiro is right when he says that they have to all come back. But the question is, did they come back? What did Jesus say? 
All right, let me just pull this up. All right, uh, sent law sheet. Let me just do it like that, right? Here we go. Matthew 15, 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the law sheep of the house of Israel. Right there. Mr. Shapiro, did you not, did you think Jesus didn't know who the law sheep of the house of Israel are? And then when we look over here in the book of Acts, chapter 2, now that in the upper room, by the way, even though that's considered to be the house of Judah, do you realize a lot of the apostles are not part of the house of Judah? Not all the apostles come from the house of Judah. They come from the house of Israel as well. But anyway, they spoke with tongues. And when they came out, it says, Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because they every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were, what? And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue? What? Wherein we were born. Perithians, Medes, Elamites, dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Philia, Palmyra, Egypt, Libya, Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes. Not just the Jews, but the proselytes as well. And that word Jews is Judeans. Cretes, Arabians, we do hear them speak in the tongue in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And then we get down here to verse 36. What do we have? Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. What do you know? The house of Israel had already come home. Mr. Bills, Mr. Shapira, do you not see that as well? They had come home home already jesus sent his, his his disciples out and told them go only into the all sheep of the house of israel so i agree with you mr shapiro in principle you were right but it's not a it's not a modern day fulfillment it's a it's something that has been fulfilled many many years ago so this is the thing that I'm trying to get you guys to understand. And I want you to be able to see the truth of these things. And as you go down in all these different scriptures in here, right? And he shall flow into the goodness of the Lord to the corn and to the wine and to the oil and to the young flock of the herd. To the wine. Why the wine? What do you, why do you think Jesus took that marriage at that wedding thing and he takes and he, and he, and he turns the water to wine? To the corn, he turns the he, he just takes and makes bread for the people sitting there on the on the field. The oil, he is the oil, which represents the Holy Spirit. Oh my goodness! And they shall not pine any more at all. In other words, they shall not weep. Isaiah sixty one. They will be. They shall then shall the virgin rejoice and dance and the young men and the old together and I will turn their mourning into joy and I will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. Why are they sorrowful? Because they the, because the serpent race there crucified the Lord. I didn't have time to find the scripture. Do you know that that because I used to think that Isaiah sixty one was not completely fulfilled uh, because Jesus stopped when he said uh, to proclaim the year of the Lord's good pleasure. And then he closes the book, puts it down, and said, This day this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. We couldn't read the next part, the day of vengeance of our God, and to comfort all that mourn, because that had not been fulfilled yet. He had not been crucified yet. To point to them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them a garland for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. What was the oil of joy? The Holy Spirit, when he breathed upon them, and he said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. That was after his resurrection. He does that to his apostles. Why did he do that? He was showing he was the same. Just like when, when, when God could make a man out of the dust of the earth and he breathed in his nostrils, he breathed in him the very breath of life. And that, that man, that clay figure, become a living nefesh chaya. But he breathed in him he breathed into him from the Eitz Chaim, the very tree of life. He breathed into him the life in a plural form because both Adam and Eve were in that body. 
but Adam himself is referred to as a nefesh chaya, a singular soul. And then Jesus comes on the way, and, and there's your oil of joy for mourning. And what did that scripture say? Let's go back to Jeremiah again. See? And to the wine, he did it at the wedding feast. He also does it at the uh, at the communion table with his disciples. And to the oil, and to the uh, and to the oil. There you go, right there. There's your oil. Fulfilled. Jeremiah eleven. Fulfilled. Where was it? The oil of joy, instead of mourning. Oh, wow, friends, do you see it? I mean, here it is, right there in verse twelve too. I will turn their mourning into joy, and I will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. And they did when they saw that the master had resurrected. They were happy. Now we do get Rachel reaping for her children. Uh, for her children, she refuses to be comforted for her children because they are not. And it's kind of flipping it over. Now we're going back to the days of the youth and everything. That's another reason why you know where Jeremiah 31 is dealing with the times of Christ. And that's when Herod, the Edomite king, was killing off all those children there in Bethlehem trying to get to Christ. Refrain thy voice from weeping thy eyes from tears. Friends, it's not even, it's not, that's not even the same mourning and sorrow either. It's two different times. There is hope for their future, saith the Lord, and thy children shall return to their own border. Now he's going, now he's going to go back. First he prophesies everything. Now he's going to go back in there coming back. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself. Thou hast chastised me, and I was chastised as a calf untrained. Turn you me, and I shall be turned, for you are the Lord my God. Surely after I was turned, I repented, and after that I was instructed, I smote upon my thigh. I was ashamed, yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. It's in chapter Acts chapter 2. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? They were turning. The house of Israel was turning already. Oh, friends. Return, O virgin of Israel. Return to these cities. I'm just reading the highlighted portion now, right? Yet again shall they use this speech in the land of Judah and the cities thereof when I shall turn their captivity. The Lord bless you, O habitation of righteousness, O mountains of holiness. Right? Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man. Jesus Christ was the seed of man. Oh my gosh. How can we, how could we ever mess this up? How? I mean, I just don't get it, right? But every one, verse 29, shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grapes, his teeth shall be set at edge. See, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. That's what the new covenant does. The new covenant doesn't say, well, you sin, now we're going to put the iniquities on you, your kids, your kids' kids, your grandfather's kids, your grandmama's kids, and all the kids that have that. I'm kind of being exaggerated myself right now, right? But in other words, the law passed the iniquity to the sons, sons, and sons, and sons, right? Four generations down. But the new covenant with Christ no, you answer as an individual. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. Not according to Torah. And yet so much emphasis is, emphasis is being placed on Torah. Going back to not only Torah, but Talmudic Torah at that. you got to be kidding me. I thank God for Jesus Christ and what he did. I thank God for that. And I pray that somehow this message is a blessing to you and that somehow it'll be a blessing to those you share it with. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Make sure, whether you're on Danun Institute YouTube, Israeli News Live YouTube, resubscribe. Check that subscription thing there on there. They don't want you to hear what I'm saying. They, they don't want you to hear even what my wife has to say. They want to silence what we're saying and what we're doing. 
And if for some reason it is a blessing to you, you want to to do something to help the ministry here, we do need your help. A lot of people have gone in another direction because of all the lies that have been put out there about us. That's going to be very soon dealt with too. And you will get to see a lot of lies have been spread. And now they're really on a major campaign to spread even more of the lies. And I really, I know they're going to be majorly ashamed of themselves when the truth comes out. So at the top of the screen is our mailing address, Stephen Benoon at P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. Or you can come to our website after you get past the malware bites there, and you can click You Can Donate Online. Either way, we thank you tremendously, and please keep us in your prayers. God bless.